this is my second video about Italian Greyhounds because my first one was really popular and I was just feeling like maybe there was a need for this information on the internet. I do know that uh, Italian Greyhounds are really popular right now because its cousin, the Whippet, just won one of the really big dog shows and also we all know and love Jenna Marbles and we know Kermit and we know Peach. And I think a lot of people right now because of the popularity of Whippets and the popularity of Jenna Marbles, uh, as people are growing up and Jenna Mar uh, in Jenna Marbles' fan base, people might just be getting more curious about the breed. So I'm here to talk about my Italian Greyhound. I do know quite a bit about Sidehounds, which is the family of dog that they're in. And I also do uh, a Sidehound Rescue. So I've worked with a Greyhound adoption before. So I have a fair bit of experience with them, but you know, every dog is different, just like every person is different. Hi. And I'm going to be speaking mostly from my experience. So at first I wanted to address uh, one thing right off the bat because I think that if I was watching this video, it might, might bother me. So he's not wearing his harness or his collar right now because it has my phone number on it and uh, I don't want people from YouTube to call me. Um, but he always has identification on and that's for a few reasons that should probably be pretty obvious. One is if he ever gets loose, he'll have his collar. And then someone could find him and bring him back to me. Uh, he's very squirmy. Okay, I think he wants to go. He's gone. Um, I would never hope that that would happen. But if you are ever in an emergency where your dog might get loose or get loose accidentally, you always want them to be wearing tech. So a lot of Italian greyhounds are very shy. Uh, my dog is very confident and self-sufficient. So he just pretty much does what he wants within reason. He just, he just does his own thing a lot of the time. I wanted to answer a few questions. So this wasn't really a question, but something I just wanted to address. So Dolly asked, I was considering getting one because I hear they're good for people with allergies, but I work full time outside the home. Um, so I, they, uh, I, you know, allergies can happen for a lot of different reasons. A lot of times it's due to like the animal's saliva and not actually to their hair, but most Italian greyhounds have a pretty short coat. You definitely want to talk to your doctor before, um, if that's like your main concern, make sure you get tested and figure that out, like medically, what you're actually allergic to. I don't know if they're hypoallergenic because I just don't know enough about that, but my dog personally, um, so he has a thyroid condition. I think he has hypothyroidism. He has to take a pill twice a day every 12 hours. And because of that condition, he actually has very little hair. Like when people meet him, they're like, is he bald? Like, does this dog not have any hair? You know, he just has very fine hair. And then he has this one little white patch that has like actual hair. And now in terms of working, so I would say in my experience that with sight hounds specifically as like a dog family, uh, breed that most sight hounds including Italian greyhounds are going to be pretty hyper and very active when they're puppies and then most will start to slow down I think I've heard around like age three or four so I got captain when he was six and uh, for at least two years of that time maybe longer maybe more like three I live by myself and I took care of him and it was fine for me, having an older dog that maybe wasn't super active, like a puppy, uh, that type of dog, like especially a sighthound, would be fine on his or her own. So for me personally, I think it depends more on the age than the breed. Like they do enjoy being around you, but he also really likes his alone time. He likes to be in his crate. He likes to hang out on his own. He likes to nap. I don't know. He's just like doing dog things all day. Um, so I would say if you get an older sighthound, it's definitely okay to be away from the house to go to work. Um, of course, with small dogs, you do want to take them out every three to five hours. Um, so it is super important to either come home on your lunch break or have a dog walker. For a while, I did have a dog walker. Make sure you, you find someone that you trust because sight hounds, um, especially Italian greyhounds, are really fast. They can actually run up to uh, 25 miles per hour and like they're, oh my God, he's going to knock this light over. Cappy. Like I said, he just does what he wants. So in the, like their prime they can run up to 25 miles per hour. So if you are having someone walk your dog, you should trust them and vet them and make sure they understand sighthounds because 
true to their name when they see something like he sees a squirrel but if they see something they're gone and they will focus on it and they might end up a mile from home before they realize that they're even lost so it is very important that for safety the safety of your dog that you make sure you find someone who's comfortable with sight hounds who's aware that these are issues you try to control for everything but things do happen so make sure that when you get a dog walker they know what they're doing with side hounds another question we got was will he be friendly with my Maltese Shih Tzu so I most of the time greyhounds that I've met are pretty friendly dogs with other dogs of course you always want to introduce them the right way and make sure that they're comfortable come on up I'm sure there's like a lot of videos that you can watch on like dog introductions but you'll um you know you just want to test them out first I, I don't think I've ever really heard of Italian greyhounds being like a mean breed uh, captains got along with most small dogs but it depends and it also depends on their baggage you know if a dog's coming from a situation where maybe he got into a fight with a bigger dog he might have some like emotional issues about that they are very emotional dogs um, if you can't tell that by looking at his face um, they are very emotional dogs and they will remember things and they will be upset if something bad happens. How, how often do you and water him? Um, so Captain <laughs> drinks water. Uh, so I have four pets. I have two dogs and two cats and they all get two bowls of water every day, two like metal bowls of water and usually by the end of the day they're empty. So I would say he drinks about a little less than a bowl a day. Okay, what would you say the cost, the annual cost slash expenses are for a young Italian Greyhound? I want to get one and I heard it's like $1,000 the first year, then 500 each year. And pet insurance is a must. So I got Captain when he was six. And at that point he would have qualified for pet insurance, but now he is 10 or 11. His age is uncertain because he's a rescue. Um, and for a lot of pet insurance, it would be quite expensive every month or he just simply wouldn't qualify. Um, and pet insurance doesn't cover pre-existing conditions. Um, but it is good to have. I don't recommend against it. I would just say do your research first. Um, there are some good ones out there. A lot of times um, in the past, people used to say it was like a scam. But in, from what I know from my friends who own dogs and do dog rescue, is that it has gotten a lot better it's more legit now so definitely there's companies that are doing good and like they actually benefit your pet so I would say if you have a young Italian Greyhound it will probably qualify for pet insurance um, if your dog is like older than I, I think last time I looked it was like 12 um, they don't qualify the other part of this question are is what are the annual expenses and you know like god this question is so hard to answer so Italian Greyhounds in general are prone to breaking legs, but especially Italian Greyhound puppies, you need to be careful. So I do actually have another dog that I adopted and he had a broken leg when I adopted him. And to fix his leg was about after all the vet visits, all the x-rays, all the medicine, everything, the initial visit, all the visits he had. Um, it was about $2,000, I'm not gonna lie, I've seen other people saying it's more like 1500 so it might depend on like where you live, if it's more affordable or not. But if your dog breaks its leg, uh, you're looking at something about 1500 to $2,000 in medical expenses for that dog. So you definitely want to try and keep that in mind when you have an Italian Greyhound. For example, at my apartment, we don't have the couch off the wall because I had the couch off the wall for like a minute. And he immediately went on the back of the couch and tried to jump off of it. And I was like, this seems like a situation where he might break his leg. So you just kind of have to take away situations where they could get injured. Now accidents do happen. They are very curious dogs. They are very athletic dogs. Like they, they might and probably will get hurt at some point. But yeah, breaking legs is definitely a thing. I wish that I had been tracking his expenses since the day I got him. So... I would say in my experience as a dog owner in the past four years that in in a year you will probably have like three or four months like probably once a quarter something will happen where your dog's gonna need to go to the vet and you're gonna have to spend three to six hundred dollars on that vet visit um, like a lot of things can happen with any dog irrelevant of their breed so I would say in an average month my expenses are pretty low like I might have to buy treats for him um, I might have to buy his medicine I might have to buy food on average 
in an easy month, it's like $30 to $50. Um, they don't really eat that much, which is a good thing in terms of like food costs. So he only eats about a cup a day. And that really helps with food because I'm not buying it all the time and I don't usually have to buy like huge bags of food. So the food costs aren't bad, but if I had to guess in a bad year that an Italian Greyhound without any major issues would cost about 1,000, maybe 1,000 to like $1,500. Oh, the other thing I didn't mention was you do have to factor in for things like heartworm medicine, like your dog should get that every month just as they should get their flea and tech take medicine every month. So you do have to account for that. I want to read this out loud because I just think it's so cute. So I'm watching this using my husband's laptop, but this is so our Iggy. Everyone tells me Iggy's are timid, shy, nervous, and sometimes he has his moments, but like 90% of the time he thinks he's a big dog, social, loves everyone. Like even Iggy owners tell me he's super social and like happy. He did break his leg at five months, popular among Iggy since they're small and skinny, and he acted like nothing. <laughs> he, I re highly recommend an Iggy. They're known as Velcro dogs because they want to be with you 24-7. He follows me 24-7 cuddles um, at night. Uh, he just wants to be with me. Perfect for anyone who wants a furry best friend and a foot heater. LOL. Hyper allergenic. The only problem is potty training them, but they're so small. I never saw myself with an egg. So I really need to talk about this um, because this is an issue that I think everyone who is considering Italian Greyhound should consider. I'm not saying this is a deal breaker, I'm not saying you shouldn't get a dog, but I'm just saying that this should be part of your thought process. Italian Greyhounds are notoriously hard to potty train. Even if you get an Italian Greyhound from a puppy, say it's from a breeder, which I don't recommend, but if you get it from a breeder um, and you have that dog from day one that you could possibly have it, it might never learn how to use the bathroom. They are just notoriously hard to potty train. Um, a woman who runs one of the Greyhound rescues in town told me once, like, they just let, like, the dogs just pee everywhere when they're puppies, and they don't really, like, I don't know if it's something about their breed or the way they're raised or they've just been, like, lap dogs for so long. They just are awful at being potty trained. But I've had my dog for four years. He goes out every five hours, and he still manages at least every other day to pee on something and usually I'm lucky it's the toilet that he pees on ironically enough but he um he does wear a belly band which is kind of like a diaper but I think that is probably after like the breeds uh characteristics like one of the number one things that people should think about before they adopt a dog because it's just something you have to be really patient about and it's not a fault of yours it's just something about the breed that like you might not be able to fix. Uh, if you get a dog and it just wants to pee on stuff that it shouldn't pee on sometimes with Italian Greyhounds, that's just not fixable. Like even with Jenna Marbles' this dog, I've been watching her for long enough, like her dogs will poop in the house. Um, that definitely happens. And if you are someone who's very upset by that or wants an extremely clean house 24-7, then I would... 99% not recommend this dog because I just have met like one person who's an Italian greyhound owner, greyhound owner that has said their dog is like perfectly potty trained. It is not common. Cappy, you want to come say goodbye? You're internet famous now. I hope you found this helpful. Um, I know there's going to be more questions, so I am happy to help anyone who needs help. All right. Well, that's all for now. Bye.